Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Today, I'm uh, very pleased to welcome Professor Jason Furman, President of uh, Advisor Economic from uh, President of Advisor Economic Council from Obama President Term. He's from Harvard University, and we also pleased to welcome Mr. Nguyen Anh Tuấn, Director of Michael Dukakis for Leadership and Innovation. He also a founder and former uh, editor in chief of Vietnam Net. I'm uh, Vũ Đăng Vinh, CEO of Vietnam Report, a pioneer company in market research and uh, conducting the ranking and rating the top 500 uh, largest Vietnam uh, uh, enterprise. So today, topic we would like to in invite both of our special guests today to discuss about artificial intelligence economy and some implication, some surgery recommendation for Vietnam. Professor Jason Furman, uh, welcome to Vietnam. And as I know that you are the key architecture for, uh, for making the U.S. Uh, breakthrough surgery on AI economy. So do you have, uh, can you give some special feeling when you came to Vietnam? Um, I think Vietnam is a really exciting country, a really energetic country, and you know, needs to move forward with innovation. And around the world, one of the n best next areas for innovation is artificial intelligence, machine learning, figuring out how to you know, use machines together with humans to automate more tasks, predict better, um, and handle the economy better. And I think there's a lot of countries around the world now that have strategies around AI, have strategies around innovation, and I think it's something that Vietnam could potentially do quite well as well. Today, landscape AI application has spread out all over the world, and the people are talking about the spring of AI, not the winter of AI. So, what are the special considerations for Vietnam? breakthrough strategy for AI economy? Um, I think the question for a country like Vietnam is to some degree what you can do to advance AI, but it's especially what you can do to use it and apply it. The costs are coming down a lot of the computing power. Data sets are more available. Cloud computing, mobile devices mean we have computing with us wherever we go. And I think the question for a country like Vietnam is in you know, what sectors of the economy can it be applied? Can it be applied in banking or healthcare or transportation? Or can it even be applied to help the government um, do what the government does? I have one question from me, Mr. Nguyen Anh Tuấn. Uh, can you, as I know that uh, you and uh, Professor Chase Furman have co-authored of the, the special report. It's very impressive about AI economy for Vietnam. So can, it, can you highlight some uh, key uh, information about this, this special topic, special report? I think uh, uh, Professor Jason Furman is a great thinker and scholar and a great uh, uh, advisor for President Obama and to create uh, strategic AI economy for the U.S. government. So when uh, Prime Minister Nguyen Xuân Phúc uh, and uh, Special uh, Minister Nguyen Chi Dung uh, lead a del delegation came to Harvard and Boston to want to learn about the U.S. and uh, uh, economic AI economic and uh, would like to learn an advice from Michael Dukakis Institute. We uh, discussed and Governor Michael Dukakis uh, agreed to support and help Vietnam government develop AI economic strategy. And uh, at that time, uh, we uh, think about Professor Jason Furman. Yeah, very lucky for Vietnam that is, uh, Professor Jason Furman is a Harvard University, not in White House more. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, he, uh, and uh, we contact and Governor Michael Dukakis very impressive and uh, invite 
Professor Jason Furman. And uh, I and I'm invited, and we set up a meeting and a seminar. And Professor Jason Furman uh, lead and discuss with Minister Nguyen Chi Jung and a delegation from Vietnam. So we uh, start, start, we uh, do and develop, and uh, we have to uh, answer question. That is a very tough question because uh, aspiration from Vietnam is uh, very big from Vietnam Prime Minister Nguyen Xuân Phúc. He want to uh, catch up this opportunity to make Vietnam very pioneer and uh, successful, at least in South Asia, that uh, in uh, very, very, uh, that top in South Asia country. And uh, so, uh, but situation of Vietnam is uh, far behind already. Uh, how Vietnam can catch up, what leapfrog strategy, what uh, solution make Vietnam catch up and become pioneer? That, and very, very tough question. And, Professor Jason Furman, he had great strategy and vision uh, as an uh, advisor for President Obama. So uh, we are together try to uh, better answer that question. And uh, <coughs> this strategy is, uh, we hope, can answer that question. Yeah, if, uh, Vietnam can break through uh, and leap in economics, uh, AI economic strategy. So that is the key uh, thing for this um, component and everything. Uh, I think Professor Jason Furman can say and can, I can follow more, yes. But uh, we have report already, I deliver. But uh, we are, yesterday we uh, present um, Professor Jason Furman talk and discuss with, uh, at Viettel, with um, leader of Viettel about this strategy and also uh, with uh, um, Mr. Nguyen Mạnh Hùng, he is the CEO of Viettel Curtin. But I think next some days he became minister and uh, exciting uh, conference meeting about that. So I think uh, you can ask uh, Professor Jason Furman to talk more about that. Okay, it's very interesting. Um, do interesting about the term because of the, uh, in the special report, you taught, you, you give the uh, breakthrough strategy for Vietnam. And you mentioned a lot about the new term of the leapfrog because of Vietnam is kind of open, uh, on open economy and making the, uh, uh, some uh, eager ambition to uh, application to take advantage of the uh, fourth generation e evolution. So I'd like to uh, ask, for Professor Jason Furman about uh, you are the key and chief of architecture to design the AI economy surgery for U.S. government since December of 2016. Can you tell us about more about the challenges when you making this special surgery for U.S.? Right. Well, I think a lot of the issues in the United States and Vietnam are the same, but let me tell you what we thought about in the United States. Um, first of all, most of the research on AI is done by companies. Companies like Google, Facebook, Amazon, um, IBM, and that's appropriate. They're the ones that are going to come up with some of the biggest innovations and figure out how to use it and apply it in the economy. But we thought it was important that the government be doing more basic research as well because companies can't, you know, they'll only invest in what they can make money from, you know, in the near future. Sometimes the more basic research um, needs to be done um, by the government. A second um, consideration we had is that AI, um, right now, the main technique that's used is what's called machine learning. And that takes in a lot of data. It learns to recognize patterns in that data and uses that pattern recognition to make predictions. And for this to work, um, it needs a lot of data. And for it to have a lot of data, people need to be secure that when they share their data with different companies, that um, that data is being protected, that their privacy is being protected. So privacy and cybersecurity are an important part. 
Um, a third element is that there's a lot of concerns that robots will take everyone's jobs and put everyone out of work. Um, I am not that worried about that, but I think we do need to make sure that people have the skills and training so they can work together with the AI so it can help enhance their skills um, rather than um, replace them. Um, and then a last area is I think new technology is a force for good. New technology can make the world a better place. Um, but sometimes you could use technology for bad purposes as well. So I think more of an ethical code to make sure that you're using AI in a manner that is you know, good for society um, and free from things like bias um, and discrimination, for example, that sometimes happens um, with humans. But you know, at the end of the day, our most important question was not, is AI perfect? Um, AI is not perfect. AI can make mistakes. AI has limits. But humans are not perfect either. Humans can make mistakes, and humans have limits. And to try to understand where the AI is better than humans and how the AI can work together with humans. OK. Uh, you, you, you had mentioned about some of the challenges and some of the key issues you take in consideration when you're making the, the AI economy strategy policy. And do you get any analysis for competitors with the U.S. when you're making some uh, consideration? Yeah, we certainly took a look at other countries and their AI strategies. We were very aware um, of what China was doing, although China's actually significantly stepped up its efforts mm -hmm. since the U.S. came out with its strategy. And, you know, my view is that global competition is positive sum, that if China comes up with a new idea or an innovation, um, we'll learn about it and we'll be able to figure out how to use it, um, and vice versa if the United States does. So I welcome that many countries around the world, including China, have strategies. But I think that means it's even more important um, for a country like Vietnam to be thinking about um, what it is it can do. Okay. Professor, uh, how do you think about the strategy for AI economy for other countries? Like, can you give more information about, let's say, China, Germany, UK, as well as in, 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 in some Southeast Asia countries? Yeah, I think one big issue is the size of a country. AI relies very heavily on machine learning and large data sets. China has over a billion people. The United States has over 300 million people. The European Union has a little bit more than that. Those are the scale that you can do machine learning on. I think for smaller countries, um, and Vietnam's a large country, but not as large as those countries, um, it can be harder. So I think being open is an important part of the strategy. I think working with companies that want to work with Vietnam, whether they're American companies or elsewhere, is a very important um, part of the strategy. And then I think um, trying to see what you can do to um, you know, export and pr participate in the global economy is something that's good not just for AI, but um, throughout the economy and something Vietnam has historically been very successful at doing. Now the media are talking about the ethical when apply for AI. So do you think that the humanity has some worsen or better uh, with AI, the viewpoint? Um, oh, I think it's good for humanity. I think technology makes us richer. I think technology frees us of jobs that are less pleasant and more repetitive. And machines will never replace human judgment, creativity, interpersonal relationships, um, all the things that are, that are most important for humanity. Um, they'll replace um, you know, the, the things that are more repetitive. Uh, as I know that uh, President Xi Jinping in China had a big ambitious in 2030. Uh, he has ambitious uh, China win has uh, surpassed uh, U.S. about AI. So 
do you believe about this and do you have any comment uh, about the China ambition, strategy? So I think it's great that China is being ambitious. Um, if I had to bet, I would still bet on the United States over China. I think our system of market-based competition, our system of um, you know, creativity and innovation, um, and also the fact that the United States is very open to immigrants who, from all over the world who move to the United States and are making a contribution to AI. I think for all those reasons, I would bet on the United States. But um, you know, I'm sure China will do a good job on this, like it's done on many areas of its economy as well. OK, let's say, uh, at a such rich term, uh, China, uh, China, they uh, invest a lot of uh, money uh, for first and voice recognition technologies. And uh, in terms of the uh, U.S., do, do, do you, some people say that you have a competitive advantage on hardware design and algorithm research as well as commercial line, commercial line yeah. for AI. Like, let's say in, in Sili Silicon Valley, very important. So do you see any uh, competitive advantage for lead mover like Vietnam? I think a lot of what Vietnam would want to do is figure out how to adapt and apply AI to its purposes and use it. Um, I think it would be great if the next big breakthroughs in AI came out of Vietnam, um, but I think they are more likely to come out of a place like Silicon Valley. But the cost of doing machine learning is going down. The cost of the computers are, that do it are going down. The data sets are becoming more available. So I think like Vietnam has done in other parts of its development, you know, understanding how to apply it to different issues here um, is, is something that Vietnam could do. So as you mentioned, the data is kind of the primary production for AI program. So uh, do you have some uh, solution not for US government to make a data available for application? I mean, governments all over the world are sitting on lots of data. Data about, you know, geospatial mapping, data about healthcare, data about the economy. And I think making governments more open and transparent, um, putting that data out there for others to use, you know, protecting privacy, protecting anonymity is very important. Um, I think that can be you know, very helpful. Um, in the United States, for example, the government has a lot of data about weather, um, you know, rain, heat, um, snow. It makes that publicly available. And then a lot of private companies have figured out how to use that data, learn from that data, repackage it, put it into apps for your phone, um, into web-based information. And so I think when governments can try to be you know, more transparent, then the private sector can be really creative um, about how it takes that data um, and uses it to benefit people. And it seems that the uh, a kind of situation, a dilemma situation between the uh, make the protection of privacy and also the use of application of the data set. So how you can handle about this? Yeah, I mean, I think that's a, you know, the details matter a lot. If you have no privacy protections, then people are very worried about sharing data. If you have too many, then no one can use the data that they share. And so you need people to understand that they're going to maintain control, that it won't be shared with third parties, that it won't be without their permission, that they can get their own data and find out what people have about them. Um, you need those types of steps, but you don't want to say you can't collect or use the data um, at all. As I know that chi chi Chinese government, they have uh, collaborated with uh, their big giant technology like Tyson, like Alibaba, and Baidu in order to promote and use the data to promote for AI. But in terms of U.S. government, 
you have the different approach. You let's go the decentralized strategy. Just let for the private corporation like the Google, like Amazon and IBM to invest in AI. So how do you see the different strategy between US and China? And I would like to pay attention in Vietnam how we can take some implication right. from different strategy between right. two countries. Right. Well, um, China and the U.S. have different economic models, but I think the right economic model depends on the question. If you're trying to you know, s set up a factory in your country and take advantage of the fact that labor is cheaper in your country, I think that's one thing. If you're trying to innovate and push forward the global stock of knowledge, um, that's another. And I think the Chinese economic strategy has been very well suited to you know, opening up factories, taking advantage of cheaper labor, um, but to really um, you know, innovate and push the envelope forward I think a more decentralized strategy, a more open strategy, you know, a more creative strategy is, um, is important. What I comment on the con that a two concepts of the, you mentioned, we mentioned a lot about the AI intelligence, AI economy, and force induction generation. Can you give some more comment about two terms? Right. So I think you know, a lot of people are talking about Industry 4.0 or the second machine age, there's different words. I think there's a lot of technologies in it. AI is one of them, um, together with cloud computing. Um, advanced materials, nanomaterials that are really small is another one. Um, personalized medicine um, is another area. And all of these technologies are what's sometimes called general purpose technologies. There's ones that aren't just how to do one thing better, but can be applied to a lot of different areas and may even make it easier to um, innovate in the future. And that's why I think you know, these latest economic developments are you know, very exciting. And how about the, more about the AI economy? Is that uh, can the uh, uh, compatible are just the, 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 the new, in the past, you just such as uh, information technologies and now a very higher AI. So do you think that uh, the, uh, is there any danger, danger for some late mover like Vietnam? Because we lack of the money or lack right. of fun. So how, how, right. how, how is leapfrog in, in this right. trend? Right. I think, you know, taking advantage of innovations that have been done elsewhere, figuring out how to apply them, taking advantage of the fact that the hardware to do this is much cheaper now than it was even five years ago, um, taking advantage of um, just the better understanding of it. I think all of those could be um, advantages for Vietnam in the way that um, Vietnam has done on a lot of other economic issues as well, which is why the Vietnamese economy has grown much faster than the United States economy ever did. I can uh, add something with uh, Professor Jason uh, as uh, in uh, uh, strategy, uh, AI economic strategy for Vietnam. We mentioned something on that. Bob was that the first study. The, I think um, uh, that is uh, Vietnam should do some pioneer project as. Uh, AI government, that is a new approach. Uh, many people talk about uh, e-government, uh, but um, now we think about new concept, AI government. AI government will uh, much better and more automatically and uh, for and smarter. Yeah. So uh, if Vietnam do that pioneer in this project, can attract a lot of resource to support uh, we can see the Google support for Canada, one city to do. But if Vietnam government do that, pioneer, I think uh, World Bank and funds and uh, big corporation in the US can think, can 
sponsorship to do that pilot project for the war. And on the second, that is the top brand can contribute why Professor Jason Furman and Michael Dukakis Institute uh, contribute for Vietnam because of Vietnam have great aspiration and ambition to become very, very strong and uh, pioneer and at least in South Asia country in AI. So that, by that way, Vietnam can attract top brand yes, because a brand is a big uh, resource and uh, also finance money, that, uh, that money. And by this pioneer project, pioneer country do for humanity, for the world, Vietnam can attract very much resource. So I think that is a very good strategy to show that issue Vietnam lack uh, elite people, lack top brands, lack financial support. Yeah, I think that our ideas very clearly. But pioneer, very difficult. Yeah, have to strong, make a very strong decision from top leaders. Yes, many countries want to do pioneer, not only Vietnam. So Vietnam have to very, very fast and very strong commitment and a strong will to do that. So Vietnam can do that either. Uh, in uh, our strategy, uh, Professor Jason Furman and I uh, show that on, uh, on the report already. So as I know that uh, Mr. Nguyen Anh Tuấn do together with Professor Sherman in order to make the uh, Vietnam's breakthrough century to Vietnam. So do both of you guys uh, believe that it will be feasibility for Vietnam? Yeah, no, I certainly think it is feasible um, for Vietnam, and I certainly think it's something um, worth putting effort into. And in general, not yeah. just AI, but innovation is you know, the key to moving from you know, a developing country to moving up the next rung in the ladder um, economically. And so stepping up innovation through um, you know, AI, strategy that we're talking about through other approaches, through a general um, openness to the world, to competition, to a market-based economy. I think all of that are important next steps for Vietnam. How about the Mr. Nguyen Anh Tuấn? Uh, I am thinking with uh, Professor Jason Furman uh, because uh, Vietnam makes very difference in uh, the past historic traditional history of Vietnam, Vietnamese uh, make very different with the world already. First, in a long uh, traditional uh, history to protect and defend uh, independent of country in, uh, with any country came outside. And special in the center, 20th century Vietnam, uh, yes, have, have uh, not so good the war that Vietnam war. And, uh, and Vietnam were with uh, the, the United States. But uh, Vietnam maintained independence. And at that time, I, I hear uh, Professor Jason Furman, uh, maybe um, he came to protect, uh, to, to protest and demonstrate uh, Vietnam war. He anti anti Vietnam war with their parents. So I think that is the, I, I don't really remind the story, but that means face a big challenge. Don't, no one think Vietnam can do, can succeed, Vietnam succeed. So now, with this new world, world to make Vietnam happiness and prosperous and uh, wealthy. And, and uh, I think uh, if all Vietnam have uh, aspiration and lead by leaders of Vietnam, and I see Vietnam is now very aspiration and have a strong will to make Vietnam go, and that is the Prime Minister Nguyen Xuân Phúc sent Minister Nguyen Chi Dung came to meet with Professor Jason Furman. So I think that is most important, but not so easy. Came to, in our uh, report, we talk that uh, to succeed, came to glory, not so easy. Not so easy. A lot of challenge, a lot of struggle. But um, if Vietnam uh, leaders, I think if Vietnam leaders do that, try to do that, and very commitment to do that. Uh, as our people in Boston and Harvard, MIT community, and from um, Michael Duca Kiss Institute can support and help our 
as the governor Michael Dukakis uh, talk with the leaders of Vietnam, we will help. So by that way, I believe, but I think not so easy, not so easy, and, uh, and a very challenge and uh, very struggle, and uh, a lot of obstacle, a lot of obstacle. And I think Vietnam have to overcome, win by ourselves. System have to improve, and uh, also as Professor Jason Furman create innovate, innovative environment for all people, all Vietnamese people. In Vietnam or Vietnam win because all Vietnamese can involve, can contribute, and can fight to, for independence. So it's a uh, strategy and uh, this new war for AI economy strategy. Uh, so all Vietnamese can create, can innovative, can innovate, can create and, uh, and new things. Uh, I think that very important environment. But overview, I think, uh, uh, I believe, uh, we believe so we, we do. If we don't believe, we don't do. Mm -hmm. but, but, okay. but very difficult, yes. And I'm very impressed with the, the idea of the Vietnam in the report, Vietnam should pioneering in AI edge culture. So can you uh, comment some of the characteristics of the AI edge culture? and how Vietnam can do this? I think uh, we in the report uh, we do, uh, we mentioned already, you know, every new technology, we have new culture. In, so I think that in the future of the world, that is the AI. AI will play a very important role. So by AI, we can see that the humanity will have new culture, that AI culture that the AI Thai culture or AI H culture. So uh, uh, why not? Yes, Vietnam can contribute and pioneer uh, to think and contribute to build uh, AI H culture. And uh, we uh, imagine that is uh, how AI citizens can work and together with real citizens and robots can work with uh, and live with uh, our people. And um, uh, you know, uh, Sophia, the robot Sophia now very famous in the world. Uh, they talk, oh, that is uh, in uh, a country uh, uh, accept and recognize her as a uh, AI citizen. But uh, what is the AI citizen? We need uh, standards, we need uh, norms, we need a uh, criteria for uh, for that, for how to accept that. So why not? Vietnam can think, and Michael Dukakis Institute, we have AI or society standards and practice committee, and all of us think about that uh, conference uh, uh, September 20. And uh, Professor Jason Furman is also one of the keynote speakers at Harvard at that time. So I think AI edge culture, that is new concept, um, but we try to keep very, very good value, traditional value, uh, uh, humanity and uh, uh, compassion, uh, honest, love each other, and forgiveness, tolerance. And Vietnam very good in tolerance and forgiveness for after Vietnam War. So now Vietnam, uh, Vietnam is like American very much uh, and a very, very good reason. See, that is very good uh, symbol, very good uh, uh, lesson for the war in uh, reconciliation. This concept, this uh, culture can bring to AI and a uh, new culture uh, that we mean combine between new technology, very, very smart technology, and, uh, but we maintain, keep traditional value uh, combined. That is our imagination, Im imagination about that. And, but we think uh, um, Vietnam, Vietnamese culture can contribute, can do. Why not? We can set up uh, some uh, AI Times Square and uh, AI Times culture zone and some cities at Hoi An, Da Lat, Nha Trang, as in report, uh, Professor Jason Furman and I mentioned about that. 
we can develop and we can connect with um, not only Vietnam, we can bring great uh, elite people and brand as a top brand here came discuss. That is Professor Jason Furman came here today, discuss with us today. That means can contribute for Vietnam uh, develop new AI culture. That is a that is a strategy to view and very new and we can do and not so much investment and but only thinking and we have traditional value already. So that is a, we believe very much about Vietnam in Viet, Vietnam can contribute for AI culture in the do you believe this cap is a cap, the soft power for Vietnam to compete in landscape of international? You know, I think AI can play a role in peace, peace and understanding. And in fact, I think it's important to have agreements to make sure it's not misused for military purposes and that it's used um, for the good of humanity. Mr. Nguyen Anh Tuấn. As the director of the Michael and Duca Kids Institute for Leadership and Innovation, so it's based on Boston. It's the center of the world intelligence and scientific and uh, uh, technologies. So, can you clarify that in the report? Uh, you, uh, you, you thought that uh, MBI will be a bridge for promoting the AI strategy for Vietnam and connecting with the world. Can, is this feasible and can you comment and make clarify for this? I think uh, very uh, feasible, feasibility and feasible. Uh, yet Professor Jason Furman came here, that is a bridge already. That is, we have we are set up bridge already. And as uh, you can see, uh, Pro, uh, Governor Michael Dukakis uh, uh, contributes for Vietnam and uh, support for that. That is the bridge already. And uh, we do not only now, and uh, some years ago, and some uh, governors in Vietnam came and visit, uh, uh, other governor of Nha Trang Khánh Hòa came to visit Boston and, uh, with us and uh, uh, talk and uh, that encourage people, uh, inspire people, and a brand, a top brand from Boston came to Nha Trang area and Vietnam, sometimes like that. We do some conference already. So I think that is a very, that is, it happened already. But to make, make sure that's a strong bridge and Vietnam can use a bridge, how can use that depend on Vietnam, not from MDI. MDI do already, such so far, today we do. And something we can do more, that is, uh, uh, in Boston uh, area, very much um, that is uh, top brands and uh, event AIs uh, and activities and uh, initiatives, and uh, Vietnam can learn, can 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 catch up, and uh, why not? V Vietnam can set up some uh, institute, and uh, now we sharing economy uh, between Vietnam and Boston. So I think. Uh, MBI can advise for Vietnam to do that. And, but I think very, very uh, uh, good. And uh, that is a wonderful leapfrog for Vietnam. Vietnam can catch up and together with Boston. Boston at the top, that is the center that uh, Professor Jason Furman, uh, after leaving the White House, he joined with Boston community and Harvard. So I think. Uh, uh, that is a very, that is a leapfrog and let it break through because uh, Vietnam need top brands and elite people uh, to lead our project here and Boston is a great resource to do. But we need to find out the solution to do that is very effective and very fast and not only Vietnam need Boston, uh, many other countries also approach very, very actively, very dynamic and Vietnam I think more dynamic, more actively to do that. A bridge already, help already, yes. Thank you. And back to the U.S. Uh, AI strategy. What are the most character do you like most in the strategy? I mean, I think it's the combination of understanding that the private sector has to lead, but that if the government doesn't play a role to create those conditions, the private sector will have a harder time 
um, doing it. I think that's the most you know, important part of the, the overall architecture of the framework. So, uh, uh, Professor, uh, when you try to AI innovation zone in Vietnam, in case if you, uh, uh, we invite you to take in a special role in the, in the project? Um, you know, I you know, wish the project very well. Tuan and I, I work together on a strategy, and um, you know, I certainly would love to see how everything continues to develop here. Will you believe that it's been successful? Um, I think so. I think it will take an effort. I think there's a lot of opportunities and a lot of challenges, but I think so. Professor jo Jason Furman is a lovely uh, guy and an uh, optimistic uh, uh, leader. Yeah. He always thinks not only is this project uh, optimistic, he thinks optimistic about AI, he thinks optimistic about humanity, about people. That we respect and love him about that also. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> What kind of challenges for Vietnam government when apply for AI economy strategy and uh, are you, uh, uh, willing to join to support for Vietnam government to, to, to do this strategy? Yeah. No, I think Vietnam is a smaller country than the United States or China. It's not as rich a country um, as the United States or China. And then I think compared to the United States, it doesn't have you know, as large and central a role for the private sector um, and for markets. And so I think all of those will present um, challenges to Vietnam. And that's why I think a strategy is important. That's why I think um, openness is, is particularly important. Mm -hmm. So uh, can you keep more some of the kind of the uh, the advantage for openness of Vietnam. Let's say Vietnam is eager to sign TPP with U.S. during the Obama term. So can you give, give more information for openness? Right. Because of the Vietnam already right. open right now, but uh, the level of open, can you right. comment? Yeah, no, I think um, Vietnam was a very important participant in TPP. And now the United States has left, but the other 11 countries are continuing. Um, the economic analysis shows Vietnam will gain more from that agreement than any other country. And that's because Vietnam has you know, so much more to gain from you know, global integration. And I think that agreement is a great way to do it. I think acting in a multilateral way. Um, China is working on a trade agreement for the region trying to make that agreement more like TPP with more responsibilities um, for all the parties involved, I think would be another step that would be um, you know, good for Vietnam and you know, good for an international economic system that has rules and where everyone obeys the rules. I think that's one where Vietnam would do. Mr. Nguyen Anh Tuấn, uh, right now, as I know that uh, SpaceX and Tesla founder Elon Musk and Google and DeepMind, uh, Demi Hassabis and Senlek and Mustafa Sanli have commitment to fight against automatic weapon. So we have been know that uh, AI one society of standard and committee, in fact, this committee has the uh, developing AI pitch treaty, and I know that both of you have the member of committee. So can you talk more about this? Uh, yes, that is uh, in, um, as you know, Governor Michael Dukakis, he loves uh, peace uh, and security very much. And he uh, asked us to think about how to make AI more peaceful and better for the humanity and optimistic that Professor Jason Furman think. So uh, we are thinking now that we will need a peace, uh, AI peace treaty. And uh, we are, um, start in uh, April at uh, uh, BGFG7 Summit Conference at Harvard. At that time, we uh, contribute uh, our initiative for G7 Summit uh, this year uh, to Canada government. So uh, yes, uh, we attract uh, and uh, we set, uh, get support from top leaders in the world as uh, uh, President of Club B. Madrid, uh, President Vida Vika Febeka, and uh, also uh, 
some uh, former president of Peru and uh, some another countries and top professor and, and uh, also we do with the uh, UN United Nations and OECD to try to build um, build that and uh, we also email and, and send letter we send letter to Secretary General of UN for this uh, AI peace treaty and we are developing and we will maybe announce an first version in September 20 on September 20 at conference AI World Society conference in uh, at Harvard yes we do that and very fast and yes we are we are encouraged and call for all people not only us and think of want to make the world better with peace security with AI where yeah, we can uh, contribute ideas and develop that and I I believe that there are many Vietnamese uh, people and uh, Vietnamese uh, can uh, join and can contribute their ideas and go support for that. Yeah, and we we do that. We are very happy. And this is a one of the uh, aspiration from uh, uh, Governor Michael Dukakis. Yes, he is a peace guy. Yeah. So you are the, like the economist and. Uh, expert in economics. So what is the major interest in research? Um, I work on a wide range of topics. So I'm very interested in AI because I'm interested in what we can do to increase growth and promote development in the United States um, and around the world. I'm very interested in labor markets and so studying um, including with AI and how it will affect um, labor markets. And you know, in the United States, we have a big issue with inequality. And some people are much wealthier than others. Um, and that's a topic I've also studied and done work on. Mm -hmm. uh, today, we talk a lot about AI and AI economy and strategy. So the, there, the very famous proverb like, the war is a continuum of economics by other means. So, do you see any disadvantage or advantage of the AI for the implication for, for the world, for use some like the uh, automated weapon or some um, danger of this? Um, I think it's, there's some danger of that, and I think it's important to have a global effort to reduce that danger. Um, but I'd remind you, weapons can be really terrible, horrible things mm -hmm even without AI, just with humans controlling them. So I think it would be better to have a peace treaty on that, on agreement, but you know, I don't think that you need AI to do horrible things with weapons. Okay, thank you. Last but not least, uh, do both of you have some message for Vietnam for today? I think, um, you know, Vietnam has really impressed me by how innovative it is, how energetic it is as a country, and I think this is another opportunity um, in AI, in innovation, um, to continue to uh, move forward and, and succeed. Today we have a very exciting uh, discussion about the AI and AI economy for Vietnam. So uh, uh, I would like to say a special thing for uh, to our special guest today and hope that Vietnam Report can welcome you for the later to discuss more about the AI and how to make it become reality in application for Vietnamese people as well as for the enterprise. Thank you for joining us.